Thank you for joining me today. My name is Matt Martin, and I'm an employee of Reserve Advisors. I've been with the company coming up here uh, about 10 years, and I've been working on our Foresight client support line, as well as development initiatives since about 2012. Before we get started today with our demonstration, I did want to cover a, a few quick housekeeping items. We have Ted Salgado, one of the principals of Reserve Advisors, joining us today as our moderator. And today's demonstration should take approximately 30 minutes. Uh, we'll go over the demonstration. There'll be time for question and answer as well. And if this is your first go-to meeting, uh, you'll see a little chat bubble or panel on the right-hand side of your screen. Feel free to leave any questions that you have there, and Ted and I will address those throughout the course of today's demonstration. Uh, if we don't cover them during the demonstration, we'll make sure that we uh, address them following the demonstration. If for any reason you have technical difficulties, feel free to let us know in that chat panel as well, um, and I'll make sure I follow up with you on an individual basis to, to discuss any questions you have and or schedule a one-on-one -on -one demonstration. And then following today's demonstration, each of you will receive an email with a link to today's recording, as well as a few handouts that, this, that will highlight the features and benefits of Foresight. So today's agenda, uh, we'd like to review the sub different subscription levels of Foresight and the features of each. And then we'll take a deep dive into the demonstration, uh, demonstrating piece of Foresight, so the modeling and creating scenarios. Uh, with this piece of Foresight, we can change project costs, we can change the timing of projects, uh, unit costs, we can add additional line items, then we can, we can modify our annual reserve contributions as well as interest and inflation rates. Once we're all done creating our model, we'll designate it as our approved mo working model moving forward, and then I'll also show you how you can upgrade to Foresight Plus. So there are two, two subscription levels for Foresight. Uh, the first one is Foresight Basic, which is free, and you have that for seven years from the date that your Reserve Center report was completed and shipped. Uh, so what is Foresight Basic? It's, it's a cloud-based software solution that allows you to access, you and up to 10 registered users, access to the reserve study anytime you have internet access. You'll have the ability to access the PDF of the report as well as the Excel spreadsheets. You can also add contractor bid documents, photos, notes, um, and any type of attachment up to two megabytes. So um, it's a great location to store all of your files. Um, as there's additional board members throughout the future, once they have access to the reserve study and foresight, they'll have instant access to all of those files as well. And last but not least, with Foresight Basic, you have the ability to track your actual project costs and reserve contributions in real time. Uh, with this, um, you have the ability then to compare to the reserve study recommendations, uh, projections, as well as what you budgeted at the beginning of the year uh, to see where you came in. And then we have Foresight Plus, and, and there's two main, main benefits to that. There's the modeling piece of it, which will allow you and your 10 registered users to uh, to create models and better plan for the future, making informed decisions. And then there's also the uh, approved model portion of that. So once an association has, has created a model that they want to move forward with and they want to follow those recommendations and projections, they can make that their designated and approved model moving forward. So let's get started with today's demonstration. So when you log into Foresight and you go to your property account, you'll see an original studies tab and an actuals tab. Again, that actuals tab, um, as previously mentioned, that's where you can track, you can track information uh, in real time. So if you have an actual reserve contribution, monthly contribution, quarterly contribution, you can upgrade, update that information here. And we can also track our project costs as they actually occur. So for example, we have three project costs here that roll up into the funding plan. So you can build this out year after year and, and track where you're at. And then I already have an approved model for this association. So when we're done creating our new model today, we'll make that the new approved model. So let's create a model. We'll notice that there's the add sign here, as well as the model slash create new scenario. You can click either one of those and a new window will appear. And this, this will be a list view of the original study and any models that have been created to date. So right now we have the original study. I'm going to open that up. And what Foresight is doing now is it's making a copy of the original study. So we now have our copy. 
you'll see that there's there's green numbers as well as black. A green number is editable. A black number is a, is a locked formula field. So for example, we can change our starting reserves in 2017. We can also change our reserve contributions. We can add additional reserve contributions and then we can modify our expenditures. So let's modify our expenditure spreadsheet first. A lot of our association clients will, will use the, the modeling component of Foresight to, to project uh, timing of future projects. Maybe a project isn't completed um, this year, they're gonna bump it off until next year. Maybe their annual contributions aren't what, uh, what we recommended. They're going to be more or they're going to be less. Maybe the association is going to take out a bank loan or special assess. So all, the, all this type of information can be utilized and used within the modeling component of Foresight. So let's change the timing of a few projects in the expenditure section. So the first example I have here is under the garage elements. So this reserve study is projecting that the concrete coatings will be, re, will be redone in 2020. Uh, but let's say for this example that we want to bump that project up to 2019. This is a project that occurs every five years uh, for this property. So we want all future projects to, to shift one year forward as well so that we can keep, keep on the five-year schedule. So if we open up the spyglass here, this is called our detail panel. And all I have to do here is change the first year of replacement. Once I click out of this cell, you'll notice that the bar chart has updated accordingly. So all six projects have shifted one year to the left. This will automatically deflate values for you as well. So if you're accelerating a project or you're pushing it off to a future year, a future year, excuse me, um, it'll inflate or deflate for you based on whatever the inflation rate is on the model. When we close out, we can apply our change. And you'll see here that everything has shifted one year to the left. You'll see an up arrow that identifies that the value in that cell has increased, and you'll see a down arrow in the, in the cell that had a value that decreased. Now we also want to do the same thing with the traffic deck. So we'll simply hop into the detail panel, we'll change that to 2019, and everything will shift to the left for us. We can apply that change. One, one thing that you'll want to do before you get into the modeling and changing the timing of projects, adding line items, is you'll want to identify that critical threshold, threshold year of the study. Uh, that critical threshold year is where your reserve balance is going to be uh, less than, roughly less than 10% of that year's expenditures. Uh, that may or may not apply to your property. Every property is unique and has different line items and, and different funding. Uh, but for this example, I will identify that here for you. That critical year is going to be year 2035. So right now we're at roughly we're at roughly 10% of the 3.5 million dollars. Uh, so that critical year, uh, for rule of thumb, 10%, we're right where we need to be. As we make changes moving forward, we'll reference this field so that you can see how that'll impact impact that threshold year. You can also phase and unphase pro projects in Foresight. So for example, let's take this air, con air, air heating and condensing unit that's phased over a period of three years, beginning in 2018 through 2020. Uh, maybe, maybe your association wants to unphase that project and they want to re want to replace all the units in 2019. And the question is, how will that impact our level of funding? Do we have the capital available to do this? So we'll click on that spyglass or detail panel. And there's a number of phases here, as well as a year between phases. So I'm just gonna change the phases from a three to a one. And when I click out of the box here, you'll see that it unfazed the project for me. So it stacked all three years into one. And then if you wanna change the timing of that project, you can do that as well. So in this scenario, we were, we were phasing from 2018 to 2020. Maybe we want that entire project to take place in 2019, so right in the middle. When we close out, we can accept that change. And you'll see here that it updated that project for 2019 as well as 2034. 
So let's take a look at how that how that impacted our critical threshold here. With that change, it, it did not make a very big change at all. So we're still okay. Another example here would be uh, maybe your association wants to have a higher efficiency unit. Maybe you want to maybe want to see if you guys would have the capital available with with your level of funding um, to upgrade the units instead of replacing with like kind. So to do that, we'll open up the spyglass again, and we can change the unit cost. So maybe to replace with like kind, it's forty five hundred dollars a unit, and we want to see what would happen if we upgrade to another unit that's in today's dollars six thousand dollars per unit. So we'll close out and accept that change. Now if we scroll over to 2035 and we go up to the funding plan, you're going to see now with that critical th critical threshold year, our year-end balance is $277,000. So we're roughly at about 8%. So that general rule of thumb would be 10%. You can also change the change the cost of an individual project for one specific year. So if we go down to our pool elements, so we'll scroll down to our pool elements here. Let's scroll back over to 2018. Now maybe you received a contractor bid document, and we know that the cost in 2018 for the plaster is going to be $25,000. We can hard code that value here, so it's not going to take over. Inflation is not going to take over. You're breaking that, that code in the background that will inflate for you, so you can hard plug a number in. So if you have contractor bid documents or you want to use a specific value, you can click into the specific field or individual field and make the change there. One other item here is you can also drag and drop the timing of a project. So for example, maybe the pool furniture with this association is still in good shape in 2017. And we simply want to move that, that replacement project out to 2019, but we don't want it to impact future scheduled replacements. We can click on that cell. And we can drag the value right over to 2019. And we could drop the cell there. And you'll see that in 2017, it was $35,000. It automatically inflated for us to $36,058. So a lot of our clients will use, use the modeling tool for acceler accelerating replacement projects. Um, they may accelerate a project because they want to um, minimize repairs. So one common example uh, for some of our clients would be asphalt mill and overlay. Uh, we may recommend that um, there's minor repair work every several years and that the mill and overlay is another 20 years out. They may opt to, to see what they would have to do if they wanted to um, accelerate the mill and overlay project and, and eliminate or minimize the repair, the repair line item. Another example here might be insurance claims. So uh, it is common that uh, with an insurance claim, an insurance company will cover, cover a portion, if not all, of, of a project. Um, so if your association, if your association, for example, has asphalt shingled roofs um, and they're scheduled to be replaced in 2020, the association has been funding that project for approximately 10 years. Uh, if the insurance claim comes through and they cover all or a portion of that project and they do it in 2018, that's gonna have a significant impact on your level of funding because you already have the funds available, but you're not going to be spending those funds on that project um, or the whole project because insurance is going to be kicking in. So you can model that type of scenario as well. Now, so for that example, we'll go ahead and we will go to the marina elements. Now let's say we had an insurance claim on our bulkhead uh, there was a bad storm and and the bulkhead was destroyed and they're going to have to replace it. So that instance, we know that the first year of replacement is going to be in 2018, might be in 2017 if you're still in that fiscal year. And we'll just change the, the first year of replacement to 2018. It's got a 20 year useful life, so it'll update the, the replacement again to 2038. We can close that out. And then all we have to do is go and delete the 2018 project cost or change it to the value that the association is going to cover because it's not covered by insurance. So in this scenario, uh, this is this is for this association is a pretty minor project. So it's not going to have a major impact on the funding. But if you have a, a six figure, seven or eight figure 
uh, replacement project and there's an insurance uh, adjustment, you could see how that's going to, to impact your, your level of funding because that's going to, to decrease your anticipated expenditures quite significantly. We can also add a line item. So that's the last piece here with the funding plan. So let's go add a line item for the clubhouse. You'll see here that in the sections of the expenditures, the building service elements, there's a plus sign to the left. For the clubhouse office elements, there's a plus sign to the left. This plus sign in each of those sections is going to be how you can create a line item. So we're going to add a, we're going to add a conference room uh, to our clubhouse area. We would assign that a line item number. We could have a quantity. Give the component a name and a unit cost. So we're going to go $75,000. Now, since this is something that's not in the reserve study, uh, you would be adding it as one line item. If you had the details and wanted to uh, create multiple line items and split some of these components out, you, you could do that. Uh, when we do the reserve study update down the road, we will, we will be on site. We will do a, a brand new condition assessment, a walkthrough of the property, and then we will update the component inventory list. So then at that time, any additional components that are added uh, to the reserve study will, will be in foresight and in your most recent reserve study. Let's make our first year replacement 2033. So if you recall earlier, we had that critical threshold year of 2035. So I'm going to have this, pro this, this first replacement project take place two years before that. We'll click add a component. And then it'll take us to the detail panel. So here it defaults to a useful life of five years. I'm just going to change that out to a 15. And then let's, let's close this out and accept this change. So here's our conference center. If we scroll all the way out to 2033, today's dollars was $75,000 and it automatically inflated for us. And now let's take a look at that critical threshold here. We're at $236,000. Um, and again, that, that general rule of thumb is 10%, so we'd want to be right around $350,000. So that, that does it in terms of modeling for the expenditures. Now let's take a look at the funding plan. We can change reserve contributions. We can change the interest and inflation rates as well. So the easiest way to change a reserve contribution, if you're going to be changing uh, just a couple of different years, is you can hard code a value in the reserve contributions uh, section. So in 2018, this association knows that they're actually going to fund $400,000. $400, so we can hard code that in. That will automatically update all of the formulated fields in the funding plan from 2018 to the end of the, of the study. If you have significant changes that you want to make, we can also make a change and uh, tell Foresight that we'd like to inflate all future years. So to do that, we can select the spyglass or detail panel for the contributions. And here we would identify a specific value for a specific year, and then it'll automatically inflate all future years based on the inflation rate, which is 1.5% in this example. So if I just change 2018 contributions to $410,000, I'll click out of the cell, and you'll see here that 2019 is inflated accordingly and beyond. So we can close out and accept that change. So you'll see the change that we made, we have a negative balance in, in 2035. So how do we account for that? How do we address it? Uh, each association is different. Uh, the funding plan works independently of the expenditure spreadsheet. Uh, so that gives you the ability to tweak, tweak the contributions how you see best fit. So you can change the timing of, of individual projects that may have a minor impact. Uh, maybe you don't. Maybe you do decide that you're not going to do that conference room renovation or addition as well, which would have a significant impact. But earlier I mentioned that you can you can plug in bank loans as well as special assessments. We could do that here in the additional reserve contributions. Uh, you can also do that in the reserve contributions, but it may be nice to keep those separate. So we can click into an individual year, and we can just plug in that special assessment or bank loan. For any year that it would apply. And you'll notice that, that our negative balance is getting closer to zero.
You can also do stepped increases with the reserve contribution. So if we go back to the detail panel here, if you click on fixed value in any year, you can toggle between that option, stepped funding, and annual rate of increase. So your step funding is going to identify a begin year, an increase in dollar amount for year over year, and the length of time, and then it's going to inflate the remaining years. So for example, let's say we want to increase $10,000 per year, beginning in 2018, for a period of five years. If I click out of the box here, it'll update this bar and line chart, and you'll see what changes will take place before accepting the change. So you'll see here that in 2035, that's our critical year. Looks like 2047 as well, based on the changes we're making. We'll close out and apply the change. And you'll see here that in 2018, it referenced the value in 2017 and it increased at $10,000. So we have that $10,000 step per year for five years, and then beginning in 2023, inflation kicks in. That's how you would change reserve contributions and or add uh, bank loans as well as special assessments. You can also change the inf interest and inflation rates. Here we have an interest rate of 1.2%, which carried over from the original study, as well as inflation rate of 1.5. If you change these values here, it'll automatically update the funding plan for you. But you can, also, you can also change the inflation interest rates for individual years. So um, there are instances where you may have a different, different inflation or interest rate for the first five years of the study, and then the remaining 25 years would be a different percentage. So you can click on that detail panel or spyglass for the interest earned or the anticipated expenditures. So the anticipated expenditures would be tied to inflation. We would click on the static inflation rate and toggle to the variable inflation rate. And here you can change the value for individual years. So now we finished making all of our changes. Um, in this specific example, uh, we, now, we now are at roughly 6% of, of expenditures for the critical threshold year. So we could, we could keep tweaking this if we wanted to. Well, let's go ahead and close out and save our model. So select close, and we can either delete the changes or save them. So I'm gonna save as a new, a new version. I'm gonna call it Matt's model. And then we're going to make that change. So as an association, uh, we, we decide that this model is what we wanna work with moving forward. We, we've come to to a consensus that the timing of the projects that we changed, uh, that that's appropriate and it's best fit and that's how we want to proceed. And we're also going to go ahead and proceed with, with the other changes that we made. We made. So phasing, phasing the air handling condensing units and adding a line item for that state of the art conference center. So how do we make that our approved model? If we click on the model slash create new scenario, you'll see that our model is now here because I saved it. I can click on that model and I can make that our approved model. And that now becomes our approved model moving forward. So you'll see here that this pin this pins to the top of our page, and it's now a locked model. We cannot change the values there. However, you are able to make to make another copy of that model, make changes to it to that scenario, and then you can make that the approved model again. So once you make an approved model, um, you can reapprove a different model to override that. Hey Matt, this is Ted. Um, again, welcome everybody. Uh, hope you're enjoying the presentation today. Uh, we have one question here, and it, and it refers to that critical year again. Okay. Um, how do we? Uh, the question was just simply, how do we identify a critical year, and uh, what makes it critical? Yeah. So the, the uh, what you would need to do is just scroll through the 30 years in the funding plan. And a critical year is going to be, just a general rule of thumb, 10% of that year's expenditures. Uh, so by quickly scanning the funding plan, um, you'd be able to identify that. So I'm just scanning here through, through that funding plan. And again, the year-end reserve balances is sort of a key. Correct. And, uh, 
many of our engineers, uh, just because what we're doing is really kind of empowering you as you work with your reserve study here, but we're empowering you to really use the study and, and make it a really a living document. But many of you know our engineers will take a look at the year-end reserves and we, we advise many of our clients to do the same thing. So it's not just about your contributions, but you're, you're actually following a funding plan to have these year-end reserve savings accumulate. Uh, and you can kind of tell where you're at, not unlike when you're saving for your retirement, you know, by the year, you know, by the time you're 50 years old, you want to have X number of dollars in your 401k as an example. And, and that's kind of the same, same kind of thing. You know, we're just, just planning along here. The timeline of course is not as long, but, but, but that's the theory. And as you can see there, uh, Matt's going to show you the, that, that year 2035. Thank you, Ted. Yeah, and, and that's going to be that's going to be your critical year. Now, this study actually will, will have two critical years that we'll want to take a look at because of the changes we made. Uh, so just scanning that funding plan of the year-end reserve balances, as, as Ted mentioned, um, just look for those, those lower values. Uh, looking at this study, it's not uncommon for our year-end reserve balances to be seven figures. So, uh, you know, we're looking at, the, at that six figures and below and stopping at that point to review what percentage we're at there of expenditures. Um, so 2035 is one of those. Again, we want to be at about 10% of the $3.45 million, and we're only at 125000 And then scanning over here further to the right at the end of the study, so I would take a look at that as well. Um, so based on the changes that you make, um, that may add an additional it may add an additional critical year. Um, or, you know, if you make significant changes um, or there's going to be a lot less expenditures, uh, you may not have a critical year at that point. And Matt, let's let's go back to that 2035. Um, and as everybody might reason, of course, you know, the year 2047 doesn't matter unless you can get through, you know, the prior uh, critical year. But as you can see, the exterior building elements and uh, interior building elements, those are some big dollars. And maybe maybe you can uh, expand those, Matt, to just kind of take a look. Now you can see that the roofs here, uh, the million dollars of roofs, uh, which says, you know, metal, I think it says metal roofs here. Uh, but whatever you have planned, that's a big ticket item. One of the things that you'd want to ask your engineer uh, when they're doing the reserve study, is there a way to phase the the roofs? Okay, and even if you have a reserve to study that's done by us, when you take a look at that 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 report, you can you can kind of take a look at these, and you can I don't want to say finesse, but really it's it's you, know, you have the power to change the timing of these. For example, the association that I live in, you know, we're a, a mid-rise building, and we have three different roofs. And although there are some advantages of having these roofs done all at the same time, uh, we certainly can plan to have uh, the roofs done in a staged manner or in a, in a, you know, in a phased manner, as Matt was talking about before. So there's different ways to to uh, to attack the problem, I'll call it, uh, about getting through that critical funding year. Uh, you can certainly defa uh, uh, defer certain projects as you get closer, or you know, move it out one year. Um, if that's feasible, but a reserve study update, you know, just an independent look-see at the property at, at some point as you get closer to that critical year is going to give you the information that you need to make a, an informed business decision about the timing of some of these expenditures, <laughs> which you can then change, um, you know, as part of uh, using foresight uh, or, or as part of an update to your reserve study. Um, so that that's Pretty much it with the you know with with the uh, with the critical funding years. Uh, oh, the the one other thing we touched on, Matt touched on uh, loans, okay, bank loans to fund projects. Uh, the association I live in and and some other some of our clients will maintain a line of credit uh, for for their community, such that they have access to let's say they had access to two hundred thousand um, dollars on on a credit. Uh, uh, just a, a, a commitment letter from 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 their uh, community bank. Um, what happens is 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 you can you can take your year-end reserves down quite a bit lower 
if, if you have access to a loan, okay, so that you can target. And then all of your money is working for you, you know, year after year. And you don't, you don't really need to have this, this threshold or this cushion of, of let's say, 10% of the expenditures. When you add up all those expenditures over 30 years, it's a lot, of course. But what you want to do is make, you want to, of course, be good stewards. We understand that concept, being good stewards of everybody's um, assessments. Thank you, Ted. And, and the last piece I wanted to show you here was, uh, you know, Foresight Plus, if that's something that your association values and, you, and finds useful. Just wanted to show you how you can upgrade to that. So if we go to my name in the top right hand corner, you'll notice that a series of four tabs appears and one of the last one is billing. This, this is simply where you would authorize the agreement to upgrade to Foresight Plus. So you can, you can select a credit card payment, you check or manual check, you complete the payment terms. And we do have two payment terms. So the first time you, you upgrade to Foresight Plus, that agreement is a three year agreement. And that three years is based on the date the report shipped. So if the report were to ship today, the finished report, um, you'd be authorized in a three-year agreement that begins today. If the report shipped on October 31st of this year, the three-year agreement would run through October 31st of 2020. And the, any fee will be prorated for you accordingly. The cost is 10% okay. of the reserve study fee per year is the cost of that. And then after the three years has, has come and gone, you do have the option to authorize an additional two years of Foresight Plus. After that two years, you're, you're five years out. And at that point in time, um, there's a lot of changes that do take place at community associations in that five-year window. Um, at that point, it would be, it'd be advised to, to have a reserve study update completed if you haven't had one done. Matt, we have a couple of other questions here. Uh, uh, here's a great one about users, as long as you're in this tab here. Uh, can users be changed as long as the total of 10 is not exceeded? That is correct, yep. So uh, the, you get up to 10 active users at any given time. So if I go to this users tab, uh, to take it one step back, so the users and billing tab, we have two types of users. One would be an admin level user and one is a board member. So whoever the main contact was for your association, whether it's property manager or board member, we give them admin level rights, which gives them the ability to, to see and use the users and billing tab. And then we also make either the board president or vice president um, admin level user as well. So if you don't see these two tabs, it's because you currently don't have the permissions, but we can get certainly get those upgraded or updated. So we click on the users tab. Here's where you can invite additional users. So you'd put in their first name, last name, email address, and select a property that you want to invite them to. You'd hit send and they would receive an email notification right away. So what do you do if you're already at 10 registered users and you want to add an 11th? Um, you, what you would do is you can filter by property. So I'm going to go to Northern Ground Offices. It'll show me all the users for that, for that account. So I can go to, to a specific user, edit them, and I can simply deactivate them or make them inactive. So now I hit save and J is no longer counted towards that that number of 10 active users and I can go and add somebody else. Okay, great. And uh, as, as we know, uh, there are uh, lots of changes in, in the governance, you know, who, who volunteers, of course, with, with serving the community associations. They have different committees. You know, people are changing in and out all the time. So this is a really easy fi feature. But of course, one subscription, uh, whether it's basic or uh, plus, and up to 10 users can can use it. And, and of course, you can also have up to two administrators. Uh, you know, so if you have a property manager that you'd like to designate or a president and a treasurer, that you'd like, you could certainly uh, get at it that way as far as, um, uh, you know, uh, controlling or making sure that, uh, that you have the appropriate number of users uh, and, as, as you move on through the history of your property. Uh, we have one other question here. Um, just have to get back to it. Okay, here it is. Um, how do we 
how do we access other mo other users' models? Okay, so that might be useful to kind of go over that again, Matt. Is is to is to look at the other users' models. Yeah, I'm going to go back over to my properties tab here. So that takes you to a list of your properties. We're just going to hop back over to our example. When you have a model, you're working on a model, and you close out of it and you save it. At that point, it'll populate in this list view when you click create a model or scenario. And at that point, any registered user on that account is going to have access to that model. So for example, Ted, Ted is a registered user of this example account. So if Ted were to log in, um, he, he'd go create, he would click on create scenario, he'd see Matt's model, and then he would open it up. Uh, so what, one thing here is that it's important to know that only the author of a model can delete that model or save over it. So Ted can make a copy of my model, but when he goes to save it, um, he has to do a he has to do what's called save as. So click on the save as button. He can't replace. If I open up my model and I make some changes to it, the next time I close out, I can actually replace the existing model. So only the author would have the ability to save over over their their model or delete their model as well. So we don't allow other users to delete uh, delete other users' models either. Were there any other questions, Ted? Uh, that's all the questions that we have um, right here. And, uh, you know, if you ever, you know, we have live support during normal business hours. Uh, there's plenty of information in the help files as well. And uh, we are happy to provide one-on-one -on -one tutoring or coaching on using this powerful tool, uh, whether it's basic or the, uh, the plus version. Uh, but it's um, we didn't talk about saving documents too much or saving um, uh, various files. But you know, many of our clients that use this tool will will upload bids uh, that are uh, that are that are attached to a particular line item. They will update photographs. They'll take photographs, create a documentary, uh, document the conditions of the property as it ages. A lot of different ways to use this, but the key is that. You know, with the multiple users, you can you can work in a, a virtual collaborative environment with with uh, those that want to be uh, engaged at a higher level with the community association. So again, thank you very much. Yeah, thank you. That does conclude our demonstration today. I did put our help desk phone number uh, and email address up on the screen for you. So that number is 1-800-760-5258. That's 1-800-760. 5258, or you can email your report at reservedadvisors.com. We'll go ahead and, and get this recorded video over to all of you later this afternoon. And again, there'll be some supporting documentation included in that email. Feel free to contact us at either this phone number or email address should you have any questions. Thank you for your time and have a great day.